Hi, it's Dino Graham with you again. I'm so glad you're joining me today. Be sure to click like and share with all your friends. I know they'll be blessed. I want to talk with you today about something that I'm kind of familiar with, and that is singing. I was having a conversation the other day, and somebody said, oh, I wish I could sing. I'm just not a singer. And I thought to myself, I don't have time to do this Bible study with you, but you are a singer. And I want to talk with you today about singing the Lord's song. Now, Psalms 137, a very familiar passage of Scripture, verse 1, I want to start there. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked of us a song, and those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Now, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, instead of the Ark of the Covenant being brought into captivity, the people of the covenant have gone into captivity. And I don't know which one is more astounding that the Ark of the Covenant would go into captivity up under the Philistines or that the people of the covenant would go up under captivity, the Babylonian captivity. And it's it was not until they got to the rivers of Babylon that they wept. And they wept because they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I want to talk with you a moment today about this because I think it's important. So give me a moment. Let me play around with this for a moment and lay some foundation. You have to understand that music itself is captivity. It, it, the way music is written, it's written in such a way that you have a signature on the music that tells you what key the song is in. And when the music signature tells you what key the song is in, it holds you captive to what you can do in that key. The, the notes define the parameters with which the melody flows in contrast with the key signature. And the key signature lets you know whether you're in F or the key of G or, or B knuckle, double flat, whatever key you're in. It, it lets you know what is flat, what is sharp in that key. And it sets the stage for you to function in a particular way because music at its best is captivity. And out of 88 keys on a grand piano, it's telling you which one to touch and which one to stay away from and what you can use and what you can't use. The key signature sets the guardrails on what you can do in that key. And so it it sets the condition for the melody and whoever's writing and composing the melody, they can put all the notes in as long as they obey the signature because the key signature tells you what is lawful to do in that situation. So when you understand this about music, you begin to understand that music flows with laws and principles and the key signature sets the tone of what all you can do 
in that particular key. And you can break out of it. You can modulate. You can move. You can digress. You can go up. You can go down. But you have to do it strategically because there are parameters now with which you can move. Uh, Now, if music has laws and people have laws and situations have laws, that means we're not allowed to be lawless. There are certain laws that you cannot break even though you have freedom. For example, take the law of gravity. You can be as free as you want to be. You can be free, go where you want to go, do what you want to do, but that doesn't mean you can defy the law of gravity. If you jump up, buddy, you're going to be coming back down again. Whether you're you're black, white, whether you're rich, poor, whether you've got long hair, short hair, store-bought hair, box-colored hair, any kind of hair, you still have to obey certain rules and certain principles. Those cannot be broken. Now, we just read they've asked them to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. And now Judah is saying... How can we sing the Lord's song? Even though Nebuchadnezzar has been ruthless, even though he's been mighty, even though they've been exiled there, and Nebuchadnezzar has been there for 18 years, and even though they've been in power and in control and done whatever they wanted to do, when they asked them to sing the Lord's song, the children of Israel said, I could do it if I was in Jerusalem, but I can't do it in Babylon because I'm I'm in captivity. And my friend, it occurs to me that the way we worship, for some of us, the way we worship depends on where we are. I hope you hear me today. The way we worship so often depends on where we are. I'm not talking about geographical locations. I'm talking about where you are in life, what's going on with you at that time, whether it's a a good season or a bad season, whether you're captive or free, whether you feel blessed or whether you're in the mood for that or not in the mood for that. And when the conditions are not right and the key signature isn't right, you don't know how to get out of key, out of pitch, out of the range. You don't know how to defy the environment that you're locked into and break into the next dimension. And you think it's impossible to sing the Lord's song because you're in a strange land. And I want to teach you today because we're living in a strange land and, and we're 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 still in our country and and wherever you're watching from today by internet many people are not but but that's not the only issue you can be in your own country and still be in a strange land you can be on your own job and still be in a strange land you can be in your own house and still be in a strange land. I I hope somebody hears me and knows what I'm trying to convey. If you're spiritual, you recognize that we're in a strange land right now. We live in strange times. We're we're in a strange place. We're dealing with strange situations. We're in a time where the enemy is defying us to sing the Lord's song because we're in a strange land at a strange time dealing with strange issues and strange plagues and strange news and strange issues. And it's not just happening globally. It's what's happening in your own life. And I don't know whether you've noticed it or not, but 
hell has turned up the heat on this world. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but hell has loosed new demons. And some of you 40, 50 years old, you never saw the demons you're dealing with right now. You're doing hand-to-hand combat, and the enemy's attacking you in places you've never been attacked before. And you find yourself in a strange land, and you're, you're almost in a fog in your mind, in your emotions, in your spirit. And the enemy wants you to lose your song. He wants you to lose your song because your song is, is your strength. Your song is your joy. It is your peace. It is your power. He wants you to lose your song until you, you're you looking like you're standing outside of your own life, looking through the window at your own life like you're really not there. It's so strange. People act in strange today. Friends are acting strange. Relatives are acting strange. Strange situations breaking out in your life. You're, you're, you're feeling kind of strange in your body. Everybody's walking around in a fog. It almost feels like your life is a movie that played late at night when you were a child. And you're having to deal with situations you've never had to deal with before. And you're trying to figure out, what do I need to kill it with? What does it take for me to have a breakthrough in my life? What do I and who do I need to call? Where do I need to go? And you don't understand that the power of life and death is here in your tongue. The power of life and and death is in your mouth. That if you would open your mouth and cry out that God would bring yokes off of your life and off of your spirit and off of your soul, that you don't have to submit to the enemy because there's a strangeness in the atmosphere. You don't have to succumb to the strangeness around you. You don't have to hang your harp by the willow tree and sit down and cry and forget everything that you know. You might be in Babylon, but you're still a child of God. You might be you might be backed up on your car payments, but you're still washed in the blood. You may be in foreclosure, but you still have the power of the Holy Ghost. And until you learn how to use what you do have against what you don't have, you'll never get out of captivity. And so what I'm trying to convey today is how to break out of captivity because the enemy is sending captivity to close your mouth. But I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There's a breakthrough coming for the people of God if you will learn how to ignore the environment around you and open your mouth and sing, open your mouth and shout, open your mouth and praise God, open your mouth and give God glory. That was not the case, though, for Babylon. That's not the case. They sat by the willow trees and they wept when they remembered Zion. You see, they had attached their song to a city. They had attached their song to a place. Am I preaching to you today? You'd be surprised at the people who can only sing when they're in love. You'd be surprised. They can't sing through a divorce. They can't sing through a crisis. They can't they can't sing through loneliness. They can't sing through a time of testing. And all of a sudden, instead of things getting better, they prolong the captivity because they lose themselves to their environment and they don't know how to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But I came to tell you today that the land does not control the Lord. The land does not 
control the Lord. If God is God in Jerusalem, he's God in Babylon. If God is God when things are going well, he's God when things are going bad. If God is God with you on the mountaintop, he's still God when he's in the valley. And and if you would break past your environment and what you see around you and the strangeness of the time and the weird things people say to you and the weird things that they're doing right now and the weird things that are jumping off in your life. The Lord has sent me today to arm you with the weapons that are necessary to get the breakthrough that you need to move into the area that you're desiring to move in because God has something planned for you and you have to release it out of your mouth. And when you open your mouth and begin to rejoice unto God, you get a breakthrough. I said you get a breakthrough. Now, I want to explain something. When you possibly at church, when you try out for the worship team, the choir, if your church still has a choir, you, you're trying out. They, they hold auditions. They, they schedule auditions. You have to show up, do your thing, impress everybody. But when God says sing, <laughs> he doesn't hold an audition. Because God is not saying sing according to how melodious your voice is, how well trained you are, how well you can do a riff. When the Bible says sing unto the Lord a new song, He doesn't talk to you about what key you're in and whether you can carry a tune or not because God is not measuring the song by the melody. He's measured it by the intensity. You see, this is an equal opportunity thing. Now, now, when you talk about singing on stage, some some folks have it, other folks don't have it. Some folks can, and some folks won't. But when it comes to singing before the Lord, even the people who sing well don't have it any, any more opportunity to please him than the people who sing out of tune. Because the kind of singing that God is talking about you doing has nothing to do with pitch and tone, nothing to do with frame and structure and order. It's a defiance. It's a defiance to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. It doesn't matter about the key, flat or sharp, off pitch, on pitch. It is defiance. To sing the song of the Lord says, I refuse to give in to the environment around me. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times and praise him anyway. In fact, here's the deal. You won't get out until you learn to sing. You won't get a breakthrough until you learn how to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Because crying won't get you out of trouble. Weeping won't get you out of trouble. Going into depression won't get you out of trouble. Throwing up your hands won't get you out of trouble. But I dare you to open your mouth and lift your voice and start singing out to God. Because God does something special when you sing a song unto him. You can be singing in the key of A, be singing in the key of C, He can be singing in F. She can be singing in A flat. And together it just sounds like noise. But that's okay. He says he'll make the noise. He'll make a joyful noise unto God. Make a a joyful what? Noise unto God. Because God says, what blesses me is not your talent. I'm blessed by your spirit. It's what's in your heart. 
It's your defiance that blesses me. Your singing breaks through something. It pierces something in the spirit world, gives you a breakthrough over the Nebuchadnezzar that's trying to hold you captive. And everybody listening to me today has a Nebuchadnezzar that drags you into captivity, that changes your mood, that brings tears to your eyes, that every time you try to stand up, Nebuchadnezzar comes along and just wants to bring you back into captivity and tries to defy you and make fun of you and say, where is your God now? Where is where is your song now? How are you going to sing now? How are you going to praise him now? So here's a little trick I learned a long time ago. Every now and then, I don't just praise God because he's good. I don't just praise God because he's great. Sometimes I praise God just to get on the devil's nerves, to let him know I'm still going to praise him. Everything might not be right. All my bills might not be paid. Everything may not be in order. I I may not even be happy. But in the midst of all of this, if you think I'm going to lay here, devil, and cry and hang my heart by the willow tree, I've got news for you. I've got news for you today. I hope I haven't gone too far. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. It'll be in my mouth in Babylon. It'll be in my mouth in Jerusalem. It will be in my mouth in Judea. It'll be in my mouth during crisis. It'll be in my mouth when the bills are paid. It'll be in my mouth when you walk off and leave me. It'll be in my mouth when my feelings are hurt, when I lose my job, when I have to move back in with grandma. It'll still be in my mouth because I'm a soldier, and it will still be in my mouth. <laughs> and they they left Jerusalem in in dire straits. The the crisis here is momentous. It's not comfortable. It's it's painful. They're away from their homeland. They're away from everything that's familiar. They're away from everything that defines them. But they're not away from God. David said, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. He said, if I take the wings of the morning and ascend to the uttermost parts of the earth, thou art there. I want to talk to somebody today whose life is inconsistent and everything around you is inconsistent. And you can't find anything solid to nail into Everything around you is inconsistent. The only thing that is consistent is God. Because God doesn't change. He doesn't move. He doesn't move because you move. God doesn't move because your conditions changed. And if you learn to be like God, that means you have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And I pray, deliver me, God, from moody Christians. I do. Deliver me from moody Christians. People that one day they're this way, the next day they're that way, the next day they're that way. God is calling his people to a life of consistency. God is calling for people who can sing in the dark, people who will open their mouth and praise him no matter what's going on in their life, no matter what's running through your mind today, no matter what's going on in your body. You must find a way to praise God because things will not get better until you open your mouth and learn to sing in the middle of adversity. We hung our hearts by the willow trees. We wept when we remembered Zion. 
If I forgot Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. You see, Jerusalem is not just a geographical location. Jerusalem is a center place in your soul. If I forget who I am, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. You need to know who you are even when you're in a strange land. You need to know what your center is even when it's a strange time. You need to know what your center is even when you've lost that job, even when you're destabilized by people you thought you could trust and you really couldn't. People you thought you would be able to count on, but you can't. People who said they will be with you, but they left. But you have to stabilize yourself by Jerusalem. Jerusalem is your spiritual epicenter. It's the place from which you draw strength. It's the place from which you draw vigor. The place from which you draw identity. Our Jerusalem is not a physical Jerusalem. There is in Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven, there is a Jerusalem on earth. In your heart, there is a Jerusalem. There's a spiritual epicenter called a pavilion. God hides you in the secret place, and you go into the secret place with God. When all hell is breaking loose in your life, there is a secret place that anchors you so that you're not at the mercy of the environment to control the intensity of the power with which you operate. If that were true, if, if I set you in a situation where there were witches, you would lose your glory. God has to have the power that transcends that environment. God has to have a power that will work in a hospital room. He has to have the power that will work in the unemployment line. God has to have a power that will work, and I don't care where or who you are. The only thing that is unstable is them because God is able to do. Watch this now. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ye may ask or think. Hold up a moment. According to the power that worketh. Worketh where? Worketh in you. According to the power that worketh in you. Not in your church. Not in your bishop. Not in your denomination not in your city, not in your town. God said, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all ye may ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Now, they got taken away to Jerusalem, but you can't take me away from me. You can't... You can't take me away from me. God said it's not according to what river you're sitting beside. It's not according to where you're working. It's according It's according to the power that works in you. And God said, if you work, I can work. If you move, I can move. If you look up, I can look up. If you reach out, I can reach down. I can only do it according to the power that worketh in you. So hell wants you to hang your heart by the willow trees and forget who you are and think that you can't do this because you don't get what you want. And, and so you're just like a, a little baby crying because God will wean you from this and put you over in that, and he'll say, will you praise me now? God will. He'll, he'll ask, can you praise me now? Can you praise me in this situation? Can you love me? Am I still your God in this situation? Can you give me some glory in this situation? And if you're well taught in the word of God, if you're well taught, you will offer up to him the sacrifice of praise from the fruit of your lips continually with thanksgiving. The sacrifice of praise. I, 
I know you don't feel like it. You don't have to do it. You can stay bound all you want to. But if you give him the sacrifice of praise, if you give him the sacrifice of praise from the fruit of your lips, your lips, the, 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 the worship team can't do it for you. The choir can't do it for you. The band can't do it for you. Because God is watching your mouth. And you're saying, I, I, I can't even sing. I don't even care. God says, when your lips move, my lips move. When you open your mouth, I'll open my mouth. When you start thinking about me, I'll start thinking about you. He's saying, I'm watching your lips. You ought to just give God some praise right now. Any key, any tune, any kind of sound, you ought to just give God a big shout right now. See, some of y'all remember when the old folks at church would walk the floor and they would just they would just moan and hum and get in a, a key and, and because they understood when you start opening your mouth, yokes start falling, chains start breaking, barriers start falling, problems start disappearing. It doesn't matter what river you're sitting beside. It doesn't matter which willow tree you're standing by. You don't even have to have a harp. If you have got a mouth, you ought to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And the devil will try to defy you. He'll try to shut you down. He'll try to shut your mouth. He'll try to shut you up. He will try to make you be still. But I'm telling you, the devil is a lie. And we are in a fight today. You who are watching me right now, we are in a fight. You can take those little cute shoes off, but we're in a fight today. You, you, you can take that pretty suit off. We're in a fight today. You, you might have to take those nails off and pull your earrings off, but you're in a fight today. And you have to learn how to go into spiritual warfare and sing and shout and dance and pray and drive back the forces of the enemy. Because there's something that we have to drive back, and we must drive it back with our mouth. We can drive it back with our song. We can drive it back with our prayer. If you drive it back, if you push it, it will move. If you push it, it will move. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts today. Everybody's a singer. Let's begin singing the song of the Lord. Until next time, be sure to share this with all of your friends. I'll see you soon. God bless. I love you.